Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail, and we're continuing here in the non-subscribing Presbyterian Church at Cumber. And what you're looking at here is the balcony of the church, and the balcony is the same age as the hall, the church hall, which is 1878. So this was actually uh, built, this balcony, in 1878. But what we're here to do now is we're going to look at a wee bit of the history of the, the ministers of the church here. And again, we're with Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Hello. And so Sandra's going to take us through this wee uh, photo album of some of the history of the ministers. So what have we got here then, Sandra? Okay, uh, this is a project that was actually put together by one of our uh, former Sunday school superintendents, a lady called Gertie Ritchie. Her idea was to get photographs of different families from the congregation. Um, mostly we don't show all of them because they are of interest to the particular families. Uh, but at the beginning, she's got this uh, beautiful writing. I think this was done by another member of the congregation, Mr. Gertie Miller. Oh, Gertie Miller. Very, very talented. And do you want to read that out there then, Sandra? The non-subscribing Presbyterian Church Cumber, Memories from the Past and the Present uh, and for the Future. So, and then we're into the photos beautiful, then. Beautiful sentiment. So the first picture, this is a copy, and uh, it comes from uh, an album that was put together at the time of the marriage of Nina Andrews, who was Thomas Andrews' sister. Uh, the photographs were taken by Robert Welsh. He's a very well-known uh, photographer. Most of the iconic pictures that you see of Titanic in the gantries were taken by Robert Welsh. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, we have got rendering at the front of the church. If you remember uh, the previous photographs, that was actually taken off, I think, about 2001. And uh, when they saw the stonework, uh, they decided they would repoint the stonework and we would keep beautiful stonework and not cover it up with the rendering. Fashions change, and at one point, people had uh, spent a lot of time making sure they had ivy. That was also taken down, so that's uh, been gone a long time. Okay, this uh, shows you the difference. Uh, we've got the, I think it's block and strap. Block and strap. Mm. And the ivy's gone completely. The ivy, it was really gone, it's I gone think, in the 1980s. Here. So I think it had been causing problems. Uh, what actually seemed to happen was that the ivy, they had little eyelets went through and then there was like um, water getting through and that had not done the rendering much good. Uh, we have the pictures of the ministers. So there have only been, what, eight ministers in... 100 and how many years now? I can't do it. Is it 185? I'm not too sure. We're coming up to our anniversary. <laughs> if it's not uh, 200, I'm not too sure about it. Uh, you didn't really want to talk about the first one, which uh, he's got no photo. Could you talk just a wee a wee bit about him, because well, he is interesting, if that's okay. Inter very interesting character. He was born up in Don Adry and uh, a very able uh, scholar. Um, unfortunately, very, very full of his, uh, himself, very ambitious man, and maybe sometimes overestimated his own abilities. Uh, he had been minister in Ballyhemlin. He then came to Cumber, and uh, his ministry here, he had lost two children, and uh, I don't think the ministry went particularly well. Uh, and he decided he would go across to America. Uh, he had taken his furniture and his papers along, and we know that because these were lost. Uh, they actually described a shipwreck. Now, I spent a long time trying to find out where, what ship had actually been wrecked and you know, how he could have survived because he's got young children and a babe in arms. Uh, eventually, we tracked it down that they were actually on a steam, a paddle steamer on the Erie Canal and the boiler had exploded uh, the, being on the canal, obviously the passengers were got off, but he, he relates how his furniture and his papers were lost. At that point, he becomes minister of a church in Rochester. Uh, that didn't work out. Uh, the people in Rochester talked about his fiery Irish temper, and uh, they believed that he actually had gone off and had fought in the Civil War on the side of the Confederates and had died. Uh, there was a man called Hugh, well, William Doherty, he had actually died in the Civil War, but it wasn't our Hugh William Doherty. He uh, had gone uh, to at least two different academic institutes. Uh, he had got uh, a position to preach in these, and then eventually had ended up as a headmaster of a, a school in a place called Newburn. Now, in Newburn, he is wanted to promote himself with the Confederates, and he actually offers to make conical bullets. And I had no idea what conical bullets were, but recently I'd actually read a little article, and these were 
uh, absolutely devastating because whenever they had hit, they would shatter limbs where the musket balls wouldn't have. So the surgeons were horrified at these. So um, I'm afraid that uh, the, uh, Mr. Doherty was uh, offering to do these. But when the Union Army came to Newburn, he immediately switched sides. He manages to get himself a position uh, and uh, he's working for the Union side in the sort of reconstruction after the war. And uh, he eventually then ends up in the uh, Washington in the Peyton's office. And that's his last job. He's now buried in the Congressional Cemetery in Washington City. Well, now I have to say, Sandra, you've got one up on me there because I, I know a wee bit of the history um, of the rifling and the mini ball. It was actually a French general, uh, mini, which is the, ball, the, the, the actual bullet mm -hmm. shape, which is the start of the modern bullets. Mm -hmm. But I'd never heard of that. What did you call that? You conical said conical bullets. Conical bullets. Uh -huh. I've never heard of a I conical have bullet. I've never come across them. I have to say. But go on the websites. But I will say this now. This is this is. I mean, this is mega, Sandra. Mega, because not only do this does this church have a connection with Thomas Andrews mm -hmm. and the Titanic. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me that they actually have a connection with the American Civil War as well. Oh yes, he was there. I that is bad, that is fantastic. Bad timing. I mean, he could not have gone across to America at a worse time. <laughs> My goodness, that that is that is huge, definitely. Is. So who's who's the next man then? Uh, the next man's John Orr. Uh, his family originated from Money Ray, which uh, is my home congregation, about uh, three miles, three or four miles from here, and a very able family. Uh, his father was Alexander Orr, who was a Presbyterian minister in Anaclone, and then after the uh, denomination had been set up, he joined the non-subscribers and he became the first minister, sorry, the second minister in Ballyhamlin. So you have a situation where uh, William Q. Doherty has been the first minister, he comes to Cumber, um, Alexander Orr goes to Valley Hamlin, and then Alexander Orr's son comes to Cumber after the Reverend Doherty has gone to America. And ultimately, John Orr also went to America, and uh, he is buried also in America. Um, I, it's somewhere, I think, Cambridge, New York, but uh, I can't uh, give you details off the top of my head. And who's the next gentleman then? The next gentleman, he is English. Uh, he's called the Reverend uh, Dunkley, Thomas Dunkley. Um, he comes uh, from Manchester, he had, had a ministry down in London and then he comes to Cumber and uh, a very long, a very successful ministry and uh, he is very popular and uh, he actually marries into the uh, same family as uh, Thomas's mother. Uh, she had a niece who was called Letitia Montgomery Neil and if you turn around here you will see the... Oh yes. So we've got here down at the bottom Letitia Montgomery Neil. So she would have been... Uh, uh, Mrs. Perry's niece. So this means that Thomas's uh, cousin was, uh, um, what was it, Henry Montgomery Dunkerley? <laughs> Trying to get the name right. <laughs> and uh, there's a very famous letter, it's actually in Crony, and this is a letter of advice written to the young Harry as he is going off for his first job in Bedford. And Thomas gives him lots of good advice. Uh, the two that I can remember, one is, don't be the first to leave after your day's work. And the other one is, if you're not sure of the man, get your instructions in writing. <laughs> so uh, it uh, was a letter which uh, did seem to go the rounds. A lot of copies were made of it because Thomas basically had, uh, you know, distilled it right down, just little bits of advice, how to get on. And it tells you also possibly uh, the secret of Thomas's success because he got on extremely well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, he's not speaking in a vacuum. He knows how to get on, and he has done he's that. Knew, he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. Um, the more modern ones, uh, this gentleman, uh, probably the most interesting thing about him is he started the first scout group in Cumber. Uh, sadly, after he left, it folded. Uh, so First Cumber Scouts is now down at the Church of Ireland, and they have had that for a long time. But uh, he was here for a relatively short time, but as I say, he had actually started a scout group, which I think is quite far sighted at that time. This gentleman was the Reverend Davies. Uh, he had a very long ministry, um, 1919 to 1964. So that's uh, quite a long period of time. Mm -hmm. He was a Welshman and actually spoke Welsh. And uh, one of his uh, friends was the Reverend Davies up in Money Ray. And uh, they do say that the pair of them would have got together to speak Welsh. Is that right? My um, goodness. So what did you call the, what was the first name of the other minister? Um, the, the, the Davies there, you said? Odlin. 
uh, James Glenn Davies. G James Glenn Davies. James Glenn. And so who's the next man then? Uh, well, Pritchard, the Reverend Pritchard. And um, the pronunciation of his name is... Is, is it Ishmael? I'm never too sure. It's one of those names that... Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, he was here for a very short time. I do remember him, but... Uh, oh, do you? Oh, yes. Uh, and the Reverend Davis as well, because oh, they yes. come to the school uh, once a year for the, what is it, RE exams. So uh, I would have seen them at that. Yes. Um, well, then the Reverend Rowan, uh, he was um, my husband's predecessor, a lovely man, and uh, just uh, fond memories of him. And uh, then the last one's my own husband. Well, this man actually came here the year I was born, 1970. I was born in 1970. So there you are. And who's this man here then? This is the most famous one of the lad, is it? Well, this is indeed. Yes. <laughs> so you can do uh, sort of the before and after. And that's the Reverend Ian the Gilpin. Reverend so there's before. Yep. <laughs> do you want to do the after? Uh, why not turn around and children? And there's the after. <laughs> Hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> so just before you, you turn, could I show them the... First one again, because I never actually showed them the date of the Civil War, man, because mm -hmm. there was no picture. Mm -hmm. So that's the date. That's mm -hmm. Reverend William Hugh Daggerty. Mm -hmm. That was a Civil War, man, and he was 1838 till uh, 1850 he was here. Mm -hmm. And then he went to America. So there you are. That's great. And then the next one then. Okay, um, we'll skip on to this page here. Uh -huh. uh, again, these are copies of pictures that were in the uh, Andrews family's possession. Uh, so this is Thomas's mother. So she was Lord Perry's sister. Yes. So she was born in Canada. Her father died when she was four years of age, came back to Ireland, and she grew up here. And uh, this picture here then, she's an older woman, as you can see. And this is her daughter, Nina. Yes. So we're going to see some pictures of Nina's wedding and her three daughters. And again, these ladies, they were elderly ladies whenever we came here. So I actually remember speaking to some of them at that time they lived in Dun Murray. Yes. They have very fond memories of that cumber. And a picture of Thomas. Oh, let's see that one of Thomas. Eva. Yes. Very good. Uh, who's the who's the lady then? Well, she's Eva, so she is his cousin. And uh, her sister-in-law was married to Edmund Dewin's brother. And Edmund Dewin is... Um, RVC. Oh yes, yes. I know who you mean now. We done a, we act, we actually done a video on him, so we did the Victoria Cross winner. That's right. Yes. yes. Um, I've heard that many names and information today that it's hard to keep track of everything. Uh, I'm going to skip over to this one. Uh -huh. We had uh, been looking at the balcony and uh, just admiring our roof. And as you see, at one point we had a ceiling. You can see the rose is up here. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, at one point the ceiling fell down. They actually did have the money to replace the ceiling, but then uh, some of the people thought it would be better just to keep it the way it is today. Um, maybe not the best decision. For a long time, all the heat went up into the ceiling, and we only really got that resolved maybe about uh, maybe 20 years ago. And since that time, the heating has worked very well. Yes. But uh, as I say, uh, the ceiling does look impressive in the summertime. In the wintertime, not so good. I, I love the ceiling. The ceiling is absolutely fantastic. It's like stepping back in history here. Oh, yes, indeed. You know? So then, uh, again, this is uh, Nina's wedding. So you can see here, they've got the swags. They've got hoops over the aisles. They've got all this foliage at the front. Yes. So my question always is, we've got all this uh, at the front. These girls are wearing these huge big dresses. Where were they standing? Mm -hmm. And I think they've got to be standing down the aisle, underneath these arches. Yes. Because with those dresses and hats, everything, you know, that does require quite a bit of space. So, and, sorry, Nina, what relation is she again to Thomas? She's Thomas's sister. She's Thomas's okay. sister. So, uh, in this uh, picture here, you can see all of the family. I'm not too sure if I can identify them all. This is obviously John Miller Andrews, who was the wartime Prime Minister. This is James, who was the um, Lord Chief Justice. Uh, sorry, that's William. Uh, that is Thomas, and that's James. Fantastic. So... Right. And if we turn back, we get another picture of the older relatives. And here you can see Gustav Wolf. I take it he was German? Uh, yes, uh, he actually, um, we 
origins would go back to a Jewish family oh, and right? they converted to become Lutheran so whenever he was here he was Church of Ireland which would be right. the closest to the Lutheran. That's, that's a story all, all in itself so it is. Oh, he had a house sadly demolished uh, called the Den which obviously is a bit of a, a joker, the Wolf's Den. Ah yes. And uh, I think he is the one who actually had talked um, well, I think he stole the quote from Harland about was Mr. Harland um, builds the boats, Mr. Perry sells them, and I smoke the cigars. <laughs> so, I mean, he obviously had a, a great wit. Yes. Uh, obviously, great ability because there's no way that he would have been in the shipyard if without ability. They did not have people who were just there yes. drawing a, a wage. Um, the other people then, uh, this is William James Perry, who would be Mrs. Andrews's brother. And this is the sister and the brother here. So there's a few of the others, Andrew's uh, families, but uh, and this is Nina and her husband. Sadly, Where's Nina and her husband? Sorry. This is Nina here, and this is her husband. Oh, yes. So Lawrence Hind. Sadly, he died in the First World War, and uh, I think that is the reason we actually have a war memorial, not only in the church, but in the middle, and also in the centre of Cumber. Yes. And uh, there was a bit of a scandal in Newton Arge that they didn't have a war memorial. Oh. To the extent that they actually had built the snow memorial in order to shame the Borough Council to build a memorial. Now, when they did it, they went to town. They built a far bigger memorial than we had in Cumber. But in Cumber, we had one before they had one. Yes. And I think part of the reason was the Titanic tragedy. Uh, the family had put a lot of time and resources into building the Andrews Memorial Hall. And uh, whenever the First World War had happened and other families were having their bereavements, the family very quickly appreciated that they had this huge big memorial for one son. And there were sons all around Cumber who had been lost. Yes. So they would have had the organisation ability to get the whole project put together. And as far as I understand, it was Mr. Niblick uh, in the town who had a book and people would have come and put the names down for who were to go on to these memorials. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, that the Niblick pew is just across there. And I said earlier that we could tell where they were. So not the next one to us, but the next one. Oh, so very good. So that's one here then. So that would be the Niblick pew. And is there anything else then you want to tell us before we uh, wrap the wee video up then, Sandra? I don't know, would you like to look at the War Memorial? Because I have talked yes. about uh -huh. it. Yes, that would be great. You just lead the way and I'll follow you then. What's, what's with all the flags, Sandra? for the scouts and the cubs now yes uh, obviously we didn't have the scouts for a long time but we did have wolf cubs as you can see there